Hello, welcome. My name is San. This is a reading today for Cancer. There are no dates on my readings. I trust that when they find you, if they resonate, then they're yours at that time. Cancer, I just have this sudden impulse to switch decks here for um, for the overall energy. I think I'm going to go with the Creativity Oracle. I don't know, it just popped into my head all of a sudden. Okay, so Cancer, um, I'm doing your reading with my three decks blended into one. So you will see a mix of all three in your spread today. So we've got the, um, the Seven of Swords or Seven of Air on the split. This card uh, always talks to me about kind of gathering resources or being in the planning stage for something. You're just, you're just beginning the planning. You're in the planning stage, opportunity. Caterpillar, opportunity. So that to me talks about a rare or unique or maybe unexpected opportunity popping up that now has you in this planning mode. It's like, it kind of feels like um, everything else has been kind of put on pause because there's this, this opportunity to, well, opportunity maybe to restructure something, rebuild, renovate. It's kind of like a renovation project. I mean, we could be talking about, um, relationship dynamics, but it actually feels much more like we're talking about some sort of a structure or it's, it's almost like. Maybe you've been, you've just inherited actually, because it's unexpected. Maybe you've inherited a plot of land, but maybe you just kind of somehow come across an opportunity to remake or restructure. So, like some, it's coming through a, a structure to re vital, to revitalize a structure or, or your home or an institution. But it's like it seems to be falling to you. It's up to you, Cancer. What do you want to do? Well, I mean, there's opinion. There are others with their opinions. Okay, so overall energy from the Creativity Oracle. There's a couple cards. Overwhelm and time. It's interesting, it's actually because I almost feel like this overwhelm energy is an is an energy that's been kind of put on hold because whatever this is, it actually seems quite interesting. Like it's like you want to get to it. So maybe in order to not be overwhelmed, you're needing to um, put some other things aside while you focus on this. And then time. These two cards are kind of going together to create this scene, right? It's like, I'm really getting this feeling of like the land, of doing something with the land or on the land, some sort of restructuring. Um, so, and the time card talks about exploring concepts from the past, circling back to explore concepts from the past and create the future. Time can be seen to be both linear and spiral, circling back and creating the future. It's like simultaneously, but perhaps that's what leads into the overwhelm is like trying to do those two things at once spiraling and being being future focused and but also kind of spiraling in or pulling in stuff from the past maybe what could generate this overwhelm energy hey there's something really strange going on here in this image i feel like i feel like it's not for everybody but i feel like it might mean something Okay, so this figure here in the foreground, um, she doesn't have a mouth, but then there's these dogs here, and it almost feels like these dogs are really desperately trying to communicate to this one. Which is almost coming through as this like disempowered, like this, this individual is feeling like they don't have a voice, so they're feeling really disempowered. And the dogs are almost this encouragement energy 
like encouraging, encouraging this one to speak. Maybe that's you. Maybe that's where you're playing into this, this dynamic here, Cancer, because this could be a kind of a big group project or a family project. And you may be actually being very passive up until a point. This could be, um, this could be the point where you finally kind of step forward and give your input to this process because it's significant. It feels like it will impact you. Even if, even if you're not the one kind of at the table or making, making the final decisions like design, design decisions or directional decisions, it's like at some point you, there's this powerful urge on your part, kind of coming from the dog energy that is pushing you forward to speak. It's like there's an, a growing urgency to say your piece, right? Maybe because at some point it will be kind of, um, uh, like I'm getting like contractually binding, but I don't know if that's the right way to think about it. But it's like at some point it will, the details or the decisions will be locked in and you want to make sure that you have your input. You want to make sure that your voice is heard or that your input is, is part of the mix. Cause I actually feel like if this is you cancer, who's kind of, um, being more reserved, maybe being more of a, a bystander or a witness of a process that is happening around you, but it's like, but it's going to really affect your life moving forward. So you want to make sure that you express what you know, because I feel like you're bringing actually a really unique perspective or a really unique knowing to the table here. And it really may make like all the difference, right? So, okay. Cancer. So we're beginning with the healing card, right? The healing and the 10 of earth, 10 of pentacles. This is why I'm feeling like it's kind of like a renovation project. Like you're, there's some sort of home reno going on. There's a, a, maybe an institution. These structures here may be coming through as really institutional, like binding structured, um, binding. Why did I say that? Because of the structure, because it's kind of like it's really rigid, right? It's an energy that has been the way that it is now for quite some time. There hasn't been a lot of change there. And for some reason at this point, it is requiring a healing. And the healing might just be talking about kind of bringing new life in, right? Because it could just be, it could be something as simple as like changing the colors, right? It's like everything's just gotten too monotonous, too monotone. Um, and so the, the healing, maybe you're creating a space that is meant for healing, right? It's like you've, you've found a piece of property. You found some sort of real estate that you, that the intent is to ha to have healing there. That's interesting. But when you walk into the space, it's really kind of got a bit of a, a dingy energy. See what I mean, right? It could use a lot of flair, a lot of brightening, a lot of um, just a new energy to come in, right? With the magician's sword and the messenger of water. Well, this is interesting because, okay, so there's this strong desire to make something your own. But I feel like at the same time, Cancer, it's almost as if there's a committee. Maybe that's what this is talking about. It's like everybody's bringing their ideas or their, their, maybe their own unique style to the table, their own unique perspective. Um, and this is, but it's, it's interesting because it's almost as if somehow it belongs to you or it's more personal to you than to the others. So even if there are other people involved here, it's like, this is your passion project in a sense, or this is your opportunity to really, um, to really bring forth a strength of yours that has been maybe waiting for just such an opportunity to display itself or to have a playground in a sense, right? It's like, so here it is, here's this location. Here's this plot of land perhaps. And it's like, you can build what you want on it. So with the magician's sword and the messenger of water, it's really emphasizing. It's almost like that's the message from these dogs. Sometimes I see dogs as angels actually, for some reason they're cause they're kind of like guardian energies, right? So whenever I see dogs in my dreams, they're always spirit guidance, maybe not angel. Yeah. Well, yes and no, they come in different form. It doesn't matter. 
it's like because there's like dark entities that have dogs as well and then the good entities have their dogs so it can be either side of the okay anyway so i feel like this is part of the message coming from this um spirit guide uh, or some kind of energy that has your back that isn't directly involved like you are. It's almost as if the dogs are barking at you to please say what they know because they can't say it themselves, right? It's like they don't have a voice or ability to contribute to the conversation, but you do. And it's like, but you're not using it, at least not at first. And so it's like they're getting more and more agitated and kind of almost like begging you, please say the thing, please say the thing. Right? So that's kind of what these are talking about, right? Say the thing, stand in your confidence. This is your, this is your opportunity to shape something the way that you know that it can be, because it's like you have a unique knowing or a vision that these others at the table don't, assuming there are others at the table with you. It feels like a group thing, right? It's like I said, it's either like redesigning your family home or restructuring the workplace. But I really love this idea of kind of finding a place for, for that is intended for healing. But in order to, for it to be like a healing retreat or a healing space, it needs like a complete makeover. But the interesting thing is here with the Golden Palace and the Ghost Lands, I feel like maybe this is belonging to these others that are seem to be part of this conversation with you, is that there's this strong desire on somebody's part to kind of revive this location or this situation into something that it once was, right? It's like now it's this ghost lands energy, but it used to be kind of this golden palace, golden age, the good old days. There used to be a lot of vibrancy here. Maybe you're actually kind of taking over a space that used to be used for a very similar purpose from what you intend to use it for, but it's been vacant for a long time, right? And so it's like, we, these, there's somebody here that is maybe just saying, well, we just need to kind of bring back its past splendor in a sense, right? It's like, let's keep it. It's like the uh, people who really want to stay with historical accuracy. Do you know what I'm saying? When they want to renovate an old home and they want it to be completely just a, um, a refreshing of the original aesthetic or the original intention. It's like bringing back which is interesting, right? Because we're talking here about time, about circling back, circle back to explore concepts from the past, right? So, so okay, with the Ace of Earth here, I mean, maybe it's just you and one other, perhaps. Maybe you're one of the, no, because you seem to be this high priestess coming in. So it seems like the Ace of Earth and the Dream Thief are here kind of having a conversation that may actually be becoming more of an argument or a challenge. There's a disagreement here for sure, right? Maybe this has to do with the past and this has to do with the future, right? With this time circling back, but, but looking to the future, it's like you can't do both because it will bring overwhelm. It's like, this is where it brings overwhelm. There's just, it's like, there's too much information or there's too much of a diversities and viewpoints that it's difficult to find like a middle ground, right? And with the details card coming up next, the details in the seven of air, it's just like, this is, like I said, this is where the overwhelm energy is coming in. It's like, it's just becoming too much to manage, too many, too many cooks in the kitchen in a sense is what it could be, too many, well, it's really interesting because it's like everybody there, everybody who's contributing really has like their, you know, they're very knowledgeable about the things that they're focused on, right? So they're bringing a lot to the table actually, right? It's like they're all a wealth of information. It's like they're all showing up with like a big stack of books, like all, all valuable and pertinent information but it's like there's something that is being overlooked here. And I want to say this is where you're coming in. And this is why these, these dogs are really encouraging you to step forward. It's almost as if they're trying to remind, like hand you your sword. It reminds you to be confident and to speak what it is that you know or desire. Because it seems to be being left out of this equation. It's almost as if. Well, I mean, you do have a vision of the future because I was going to say it's almost as if the past and the future being already represented don't quite don't quite um, encompass what it is that you're bringing to the table, right? But you are, I want to say, future focused. You have a future vision. It might just be really different from this future vision. 
Yours actually, it's almost as if there's some sort of a blending, maybe. It's a, okay, so it's like this. It's like you're bringing a voice to the table, so you're this high priestess, right? It's being pushed forward by these dogs, by these spirit guides to say it, to say what you know, because what you know or your perspective or your vision is ex extremely unique. And what's really fascinating here is it's coming up with the lay of the land, the ancestral wisdom, which is really interesting because that card talks to me about somebody who has a unique ability to, it's like they understand, they, they, can, they can translate a language maybe from um, a consciousness that is not accessible to most. Is that the right way to say that? Okay, it's like this, because I see this as almost like as crop circles, right? We can all witness the crop circles. Most people, and for a very long time, have been talking about what they could possibly mean, right? There's a lot of theories, a lot of ideas about what does each crop circle mean? Where do they come from? What are they exactly? Is it communication? Are there encoded messages in there? What might they be? And it's like, this card talks about the one who actually can just, they can just receive it, right? It's just kind of this intuitive knowing. They can look at the crop circles and just receive the information directly. There's no speculation. There's no theorizing or comparing notes, right? Or having a big discussion about it. There's just a knowingness there, right? So it's like this intuitive gift to know or understand a communication a message or an energy kind of embedded in a situation that is being overlooked maybe by people who are bringing too much kind of intellect or um, knowledge of history, something like that to the table, right? Especially with this golden age and this, sorry, the golden age, the golden palace and the ghost lands. It's like one of these individuals seems to be an historian and the other one maybe is some sort of a visionary. And it's almost like, well, it's not quite right to say that you're right in the middle, but there's something unique about you because it's like you're in the present and you're receiving information almost like from the landscape itself, spirit of the place. It's like the, the land or the location is speaking to you directly. And there's almost like, it's almost like this co-creative opportunity, right? I was saying this unique opportunity um, that the location or the situation itself almost wants to be represented, right? It's like it has a consciousness in a spirit, but it doesn't necessarily have a voice. Well, it does, but very few can hear it. And you're one that can hear it. I mean, some, it's almost like this one here, who may be the historian, um, maybe has a bit of sense of the, this is the interesting thing. It's like, you're all really gifted. I want to say, like I said, historian, visionary, and then this is you, it's almost like you're present. You're very in this now moment, kind of receiving this now desire or preference being expressed by the location itself, if that makes any sense. It's like being a, a, a location whisperer, land, land whisperer, you know, there's like horse whisperer, the dog whisperer. It's like you can tap into a site, tap into an architecture. And it's like the, maybe the instinct or the, um, the kind of easy path in a sense is just to look at a, a structure or a location and imagine what it used to be and just kind of bring that back, try to, to revive its spirit in a sense, right? To capture its original glory. Um, or there's this, this kind of character that wants to just say, let's take this old, um, ancient architecture and completely, um, modernize it and, and make it something like that has, you know, something of its original character, but is completely repurposed. Right. But then you're here almost saying, but there's something we're not considering here. And it's almost like the voice of the location itself which is really fascinating to me when you tie it back to this idea of healing, creating a healing space. It's like, if you're gonna, if you're going to create kind of a sacred space somewhere that will be exceptionally healing, 
it's like, it makes sense to me that you would want input from the location itself, right? It's like, maybe it's just reading the energies of the space and knowing how to kind of fold that in or utilize that. You know, if we're talking about things like ley lines or the grid, the, the earth grid in some way or the magnetic somehow, maybe that's what we're talking about here. It's like you have this intuitive ability to tap into those layers of reality that will really kind of bring the, the true essence or the true um, strengths of that location to the forefront. It's like, it could be great no matter what direction it goes, right? Like if it's restored right to its original, if it's completely repurposed, that could be great. It could be really stunning and captivating um, and still a place that people would want to be. But it's like, this is a different, this is a different way to approach it that is very unique that could create something really different from like stuff that's out there kind of thing, right? With the the woodwives adaptability, this is where I'm getting a lot of this too. It's like the, the, okay, because it's like the place itself, the spirit of the land itself is saying it, it wants, well, it wants to create it. It wants to change shape. Like it doesn't really want to go back to what it used to be. So it does want change. It wants the freedom in a sense to express in a new way. So maybe it is more in alignment with this visionary energy, but nevertheless, the overall thing is that it's like cancer. You're the one who could really be the key in making this situation as optimal as possible because I mean, maybe you can blend all perspectives, but it's like, your perspective of being kind of the voice of the place itself or the energetics of the place is missing up until now, right? And that's what this is talking about. It's like there's the, this real push for you to, I mean, even if it's, it's like clearly it's unconventional, right? Clearly it's unconventional. Maybe that's why you're hesitant to add your voice, but it's very powerfully showing me that if you do, it's like really incredible things. I feel like this place is gonna be great anyway, or this project is gonna be great anyway. Something old is kind of being made new again, or something that's been kind of abandoned or vacant is being like brought back to life. There's going to be a lot of life and activity happening in this space, in the future, or in this dynamic, or in this situation. But it's like your specific perspective on it could really kind of it's just, it brings such a uniqueness to it that it's like, it will stand out from other things like it, or it will give it the edge over, you know, other healing facilities or other healing retreats. It's kind of like, it's just like that, that thing that will really make the difference. Okay. So, okay. I'm going to leave it there. Cancer. I'm going to continue to pull cards and create an extended. If you're interested in that link is in the description. And if not, I will see you next time. Thanks. Bye.